I wish I could describe what draws me to the music of Gustav Mahler. It's unlike really any relationship I have with music. It all started in Edinburgh when I was selling programs at the Usher Hall, which is the, the hall, the Sydney Opera House, if you like, uh, in Edinburgh. And uh, I heard Mahler's music for the very first time. It's Leonard Bernstein came with the London Symphony Orchestra. The rest is history. I, I, this, it, changed my, it changed my outlook. Uh, it was similar to when I first attended a Wagner opera uh, around the same time. And I, I just knew that my life has to involve this sound world. I want to live in that sound world, literally, viscerally. And uh, <clears throat> that's where my lifelong obsession with the music of Gustav Mahler began. And I know I am not abnormal in that. I mean, I know I share that, that addiction with countless others. As you just grow older, and of course I've, I've conducted his music a great deal, it hasn't lost any of its power. And the Fourth Symphony is uh, it's, it's a, a, a joyous work. This is a period in his life where uh, he knew joy, both in his personal life and in his professional life. There's something very childlike about it. Um, there is inevitably, though, the dark side the second movement, the fiddler, the grim reaper, is that the devil who is that? A, tuned, a violin that's tuned differently to sound a little more, um, a little edgy. And of course the, 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 the heart of the work is the, is the third movement, uh, where it's blissful music, peaceful music, uh, deeply felt music, those listening will hear the very beginning, that glorious cello line, but listen carefully to what's going on underneath it. There's a pulse, this boom, 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 underneath it. Initially, just very subtly underpinning this glorious long theme. And then listen to the end of the movement, when all of a sudden there's this one of the most remarkable, trans, uh, one of the most remarkable modulations in musical history. We're in G major, and then suddenly the orchestra, it's like, Literally, in Mahler's mind, his vision, the gates of heaven opening up. And the music just takes, the, takes this leap, it's a breathtaking moment, and finally we understand that boom, 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 from the beginning of the movement, thundered, thundered out by, by, by the percussion. And it's a, it's, a, it's a joyous work, and of course, the, in some ways, the most tender, the most beautiful part is once that uh, ecstatic transition in that slow movement begins to abate, we are left with a smallish orchestra and they begin the fourth movement, which is a song. The movement's called Das Himmlische Leben, which means uh, the heavenly life. And this is a child's vision of what heaven would be like. And it's sung uh, by a soprano. And of course, it's anybody who doesn't know the symphony, uh, uh, much like the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven, you just think, oh, what, what could make this experience even better? It's the addition of a human voice. And this gives us a chance to feature a remarkable soprano, Ling, Ling Fang. I worked with Ling last March for the very first time in Atlanta. We were doing the Brahms Requiem together and it was just, uh, so blown away by, by how good she is. But the Mahler Symphony is just one song, so that led to, well, what else would you like to sing and what fits into that program? Which is why we'll feature some of Richard Strauss's beloved orchestral songs. And the program begins with something that nobody here will ever have heard. I think it's unlikely. It's a work by Anton Webern, and I can hear people go, <gasps> Anton Webern, second Viennese school. But he wrote this work in 1904 or so. It's idyllic. It's about this feeling of his response as a musician, as a composer, to nature. It's, it's so beautifully Wagnerian. It's also quite Mahlerian. It's so gorgeous, so exquisite, so well written, and seems like the perfect way to, to lure our audience into this, uh, if you like, this, I say child's view, but child's view, it's, it's, it's beautiful music and it leads to the music of Richard Strauss, which then leads to the music of Gustav Mahler. And uh, 
I think it has the making of a very special evening.